Here we are at the place where God would be speaking to us this morning. And I believe that every time God speaks to us, there's someone who needs to hear what God has to say. Someone may be going through a very situation that the, the preacher has had a word laid on his heart to be the remedy for. Amen. So whosoever, hallelujah, the word is for this morning, just pray that you will receive it and act upon it in Jesus' name. In the Chinese Bibles, we get to the book of Philippians chapter 4. Verses 6 to 7. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord reads thus. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made, be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The word I have to share with you this morning is entitled, There is no peace without the Prince. Amen? There is no peace without the Prince. Praise God. The first man, Adam, was the only human being who was born in complete peace and tranquility. Amen? Adam walked to God in the cool of the day, the Bible says. God would come down and visit him. And Adam was a oblivious to, 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 to turmoil. There was no turmoil in Adam's life. There was no pressure in Adam's life. Adam walked with God. And what a beautiful scenario that is, just to know that you, as one individual, can walk with God where there is no turmoil. And everything in your life is peaceful. Isn't that a beautiful thought? Yeah. Hallelujah. So Adam was totally oblivious to anything that could threaten his relationship with his Creator. There were no external pressures, as I said, that to cause Adam any concerns. No external pressures. Pressures from without. You know, we can experience sometimes pressures from without. And there was no internal pressure, no internal strife. Adam had it all going on inside. There was no conflict, no internal conflict. So there was no external pressure and no internal conflict. Adam's connection to God meant that he was in perfect harmony with his surroundings. What a beautiful picture that is. Hallelujah. The introduction of Eve, and I'm not saying that. <laughs> because the woman came into his life, the whole all, all of a sudden trouble broke, broke loose. I'm not saying that. But it's the fact that the introduction of Eve and the subsequent eating of the apple changed the whole scenario. Amen? The Bible states that in Genesis 3, that after they ate the apple, that their eyes were open and the pair found themselves naked before God. Adam and Eve lost their innocence and their consciences were all of a sudden alive to their fallen state and to the immediate change in their surroundings. All of a sudden, Adam and Eve are now exposed to external pressures. Amen? That idyllic life was shattered and all of a sudden external pressures through sin has become, has come upon them. Hallelujah. They are also exposed to inner turmoil, pressure from within, inside their emotions. Remember, Adam and Eve lost that, 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 that they, they, they had their, their consciences intact. But all of a sudden their consciences have been exposed to external and internal pressure. Hallelujah. So therefore the fall condemned the pair to the loss of their peace. The peace that they had known. The peace that they had enjoyed. All of a sudden was lost. And every single man and woman born since that day, hallelujah, has been born without peace. We're all exposed to pressures from externally and pressures internally. Hallelujah. The external pressure that came upon Adam and Eve was pressure from work. All of a sudden Adam had to work. By the sweat of his brow, Adam had to work to provide. The pressure from childbirth, all of a sudden Eve was condemned to giving birth to children in great pain. 
The pressure suddenly came upon them in their family life when their first son Cain became a murderer. Pressures from without. Hallelujah. And they also began to experience pressures from within. Emotional turmoil over what they had done. Guilt, regret, and sorrow. So from going from no pressure, all of a sudden they have plenty pressure. From going from, a, from complete peace, all of a sudden their peace is completely shattered. Oh, glory to God. You see, because the absence of peace opens the door to all manner of turmoil. When you don't have peace in your life, the door is open to all manner of pressure, turmoil, and strife. The fallen condemned the world to Satan's grip. And ever since, he has been causing havoc, attempting to destroy man's peace through external pressure and internal pressure. Enmity existed between God and man. Hallelujah. Adam was, could be considered a friend of God, but because of the fall, Adam became an enemy of God. And every man and woman born since is born in sin, shaped in iniquity, and we are born an enemy of God with no peace. Hallelujah. We look at life today and externally there is no peace. Wars continue unabated. And do you realize there are more wars going on at present than there's ever been in human history? Wars all over the place. Everywhere you look, there is a war. And we see even this week that the Russian army has, has, has pulled up in, in Crimea, pulled up in, 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 the, in the Ukraine, threatening war again. Everybody's getting a bit panicky, thinking, is this going to be another outbreak of war? Because we are so used to war, because there is no peace in the world. Hallelujah. Murder is at an all-time high. And the wickedness of man's heart is increasing rather than decreasing. The longer we go on, the more we see there is no peace in the world in which we live. And because there is no peace externally, then there is no peace internally because man is, is always worrying. There's always some strife going on. And that's what the devil has done. He has planted the seed that would destroy peace from without and peace from within. So if you are waiting for peace to be restored to this fallen world anytime soon, you better stop waiting. Because until the second advent of Jesus Christ, there is no peace in this world. Externally, there is no peace. Because there is never any peace without the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We look at our lives today and we're all suffering one way or another from some internal strife. Relational turmoil. Hallelujah. Financial pressures. Glory to God. There's always some heartache, some mental stress, some physical ailment, all threatened to take away our peace. Is anybody hear what I'm saying today? Does anybody understand what I'm saying? Oh, glory to God. This world is in such a depressing state. Hallelujah. And when you look around and look at the world today and you, you see the suicide rate, that alone tells you that mankind is struggling to find any kind of answer for the eternal strife that he's going through. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. I want to tell you some statistics regarding suicide that may shock you. Hallelujah. 
Statistics for suicide say that one million people across this globe die by suicide each year. One million people. More people die by suicide each year than by murder and war combined. Are you hearing what I'm saying? More people take their own lives in one year. More than suicide, more than murder and war combined. Can you see how alarming it is? Because when a man has no outlet, when a man has nowhere to turn with his internal strife, all that he can do that is he feels that is left to him, the only choice that is left open to him or her is to take their own life. It is estimated that 5% of people attempt suicide at least once in their life. Hallelujah. I submit to you today that even in this small congregation, there is at least one person who has either attempted or thought about suicide at some stage in their life. I can guarantee you that that is a fact. Nobody will probably admit it, but somebody's thought about it, and maybe somebody has even attempted it. Because we see when there is nowhere to go. Hmm? Hmm? I remember last year, I think it was last year, there was a footballer by the name of Gary Speed, a very well-known footballer. I would say he was a millionaire ten times over. He's one of the highest um, number of Premier League appearances in history. Over 500 times this man has turned out for Premier League teams. A fine footballer. Millionaire many times over. But the pressures of life. Hallelujah. Internal strife. No peace in his life drove this man to commit suicide. So it goes to show that there is no riches upon this world that can help a man who has no internal peace. No money can't do it, Brother Freddie. Hallelujah. And some of us spend our lives chasing after the filthy Luca. But money cannot guarantee you peace. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. And do you know that suicide is also the second biggest cause of death amongst 15 to 19 year olds? Huh? Suicide. Young people who feel that they have no hope, who would rather take their own lives because there is no escape. I come to let somebody know today that there is no peace outside of the Prince of Peace. Because when the Prince of Peace is, enters into our life, we have someone to whom we can go to. Someone to we can cry out, Abba, Father, help me in my time of need. Help me in my time of distress. When my financial pressures are getting too much for me. When my relationship is breaking down. There is someone to whom I can turn. You know when it is like having a, 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 a when the pressure builds up. And you just kneel, get down on your knees and begin to pray to God. It's like you just turn on the, the open up the pressure valve. And it just releases that pressure. You can take your worries to him. Oh, hallelujah. Where would I be if it was not for your grace? Oh, God. Where would I be had I not known the peace of God in my life? Hallelujah. So the world knows not this peace. But before the foundation of the world, God prepared a way of escape for mankind. To counteract the fall, God had prepared a solution to the pre-peace problem. One of the many names attributed to the Lord Jesus Christ was the Prince of Peace. He was so called by Isaiah in Isaiah 9 and 6. It was the foreshadowing of one who would come and offer peace to a dying world. 
But you see, Israel got it a little bit twisted. Because Israel were looking for a king who would come and alleviate external pressures to take the hand of bondage from Rome or place it upon them to release them from that pressure. That's the kind of king that Israel was looking for. But that is not the kind of king that they had. Hallelujah. Because Jesus Christ of Nazareth when we study the words Prince of Peace, we understand that he didn't come with an agenda to take away external pressures. Oh, glory to God. He didn't come with a, with a plan to take away external pressure. But what he came with was a plan that would alleviate the inner turmoil that man would suffer. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. So when we look at the words, the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. Prince denotes one who rules. One who is a head person. A governor or a steward. Hallelujah. So the, the word Prince and Prince of Peace denotes one who rules. He is a head person, a governor or a steward. So Jesus came to rule over peace. He is the steward of peace. The governor of peace. Hallelujah. And outside of his rulership, there is no peace. Glory to God. And when we look at the word peace, the word prince means one who rules over. The word peace is a word in the, in the Hebrew, a word called shalom. Which is the most, it's the most, one of the most famous words in the Hebrew language. The word is a very broad one. It has many, many meanings. It can be used to say hello and goodbye. It's like a salutation. When you greet someone, you say shalom. When you say goodbye, you say shalom. But it can also mean success, peace, prosperity, wholeness, and well-being. Hallelujah. But when we look into the Greek, and the understanding of the word peace takes on an even greater significance. The Greek equivalent is a word by the name of Irene. And this gives us an even more, even more depth into the understanding of the word peace. Irene has two meanings. One, it means to bind together that which is separated, to bring back that which is separated. But it also means to have tranquility. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Or to live in comfort in spite of outside turmoil. I'm going to do a little demonstration. Is that okay? Keep us with them cushions, them blue cushions there. there. You see, Greek is a very pictorial language. Greek paints pictures. Amen? So that we can understand the word of God better. This, this is what peace means in Greek. The word Irene means to just catch. It means to relax in the midst of turmoil. Jesus didn't come to bring it, bring a solution to your external worries and pressures because they will always be in the world. What Jesus came to give us was internal peace in spite of the pressures that we face. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So no born again believer should be finding themselves in a situation that when external pressures come we fall apart and panic. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. When the external pressures come, this is what you do. You say, Lord, I'm giving this thing over to you. You know a great um, analogy of Airy was, was, was shown when, when Jesus was in the boat with the disciples. When they were going over to the other side in the, in the midst 
of the storm. In the midst of the sea, the storm and the billows began to roll. The pressures from, came from without and within. And the, what did the disciples do? They started to panic. Lord, perish thou not if we perish. Of course he cares. If you are, what did Jesus do in the midst of the storm? Jesus was fast asleep. When the panic ensues, when everything around you seems to be crashing down, what did, you, what did Jesus do? He was asleep in the midst of the storm. Jesus, we're dying. Jesus, the waves are going to take us over. Jesus, the billows are roaring. We're in trouble here, yeah, Jesus. So all of a sudden, Jesus awakes from his son. Oh, you are little thing. Don't you understand that I'm in the boat with you? When you're going through your problems, Sister Chantel, don't you understand that Jesus is in the boat with you? Hallelujah. Brother Freddie, with strife and, and, and pressure is all coming upon you. Don't you understand he's in the boat with you? Huh? The God that we serve, he neither slumbers nor sleeps. He sees what you're going through. And he's just waiting for that ideal time before he stands up in your situation and he speaks to the, the, the waters and he speaks to the wind and says, peace, be still. Because I am in control. The Prince of Peace, he came to give us an eternal peace. Hallelujah. That will guard us, protect us, from the storms of this life. Why is it then that so many Christians panic as soon as adversity comes upon them? My God, sometimes I wonder when, how mature people find themselves in a situation of panic. I understand that when the doctor's report comes, that is going to make you think, mm, 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 what, what's going on here? But I submit to you that a mature believer in Christ ought not to panic. That's why I love Sister Fife and her testimony. Every time I go to see her and sit down and talk, I love to hear her testimony. Certain things and pressures have come upon her, external things that could cause her internal agony. But the woman of God is a mature woman of God. And she says to me, what have I got to worry about? Huh? And we need to take something from a testimony like that. What have you, what, what has she really got to worry about? She belongs to Christ. Hallelujah. And we as believers need to look at that testimony and take something from it. Stop panicking. If at all you have the Prince of Peace and I really rest in your life, stop the panicking. Hallelujah. Sometimes you get the brethren on the phone to one another in utter panic, Freddy, about their situations. Relax. Hebrews 4 tells us that we need to rest in God. Rest in the Prince of Peace. Oh, glory to God. When you see the Apostle Paul, hallelujah, in Acts 16, you see him and Silas locked up in prison. They have just been stripped naked beaten with many stripes and locked in the deepest, darkest prison. What do we see the Apostle Paul doing? Panicking, screaming, shouting, Lord, why have you left me here? No, 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 no. This mature man of God, filled with the Holy Spirit, he's worshiping, he's singing the songs of Zion. And the Bible said that at midnight, his situation changed. So instead of panicking, instead of worrying, why don't you pray? Why worry when you can pray? Oh, 
Oh Lord, sometimes prayer seems to be our, our, our last resort. After we've told the whole world, took on the opinions of 10 or 20 people, and then we, then we think that prayer is the last thing that we should do. Certain times when things happen to me, I don't tell nobody. I tell my wife and that's it. Because sometimes when you tell people things, especially when it comes to sickness, you know, people are starting to plan a funeral already. Yes. Huh? They start to plan your funeral. Yes. Uh, it's like you want to run to Reverend James and say, why? Such and such nearly dead. <laughs> Even before they're dead. <laughs> Where's the Prince of Peace in your life? Where is the internal peace that the Prince of Peace has given to you? Hallelujah. 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 Paul also suffered many of the hardships, but a fully surrendered life enabled him to rest secure even in times of great conflict. Hallelujah. There will never be peace in the heart of men until they accept the Prince of Peace. Because the world cannot experience the peace of God. Before I was saved, I used to fret about everything. I used to fret about dying. I'm thinking, Lord, am I going to be in my coffin and, and I feel the worms eating and eating away at me? I used to have some really warped thoughts about dying. I used to be terrified, terrified. But the day that I got saved and gave my heart to God, the peace of God that passes all human understanding. Hallelujah. Rested and remained within me. So now dying is not a fear of mine. But it invented something to look forward to. Hallelujah. For to live is Christ. And to die is gain. What have we got to worry about, brethren? Huh? Somebody came in here panicking this morning. Somebody came in here worried this morning. I don't want to let you know that you have the Prince of Peace. The one who came with the answer to the peace question. Who settled peace in your heart. All you need to do is to walk in it. You say, but I don't, I don't have no peace. I can't, I can't get no peace. Let me tell you, you have peace. You have the peace of God within you. Hallelujah. Peace. It's one of the nine segments of the fruit of the Spirit. At salvation, you get it all in seed form. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's not like the gifts of the Spirit, where someone might get this gift, someone may get that gift, and somebody may have, someone may have a, a combination of gifts. Huh? Like speaking in tongues, gifts of prophecy, gifts of, 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 of healing, working of miracles, discernment. We may get a, a, a spattering of the gifts, but the fruit of the Spirit, that's different. Every single one of us at salvation, we have the fruit of the Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit in Greek means to pluck. It means to grab. And it means to take for oneself. Amen? So all you need to do is just to take hold of it. And let it activate in your life. You say you have no peace. I've come to tell you, if you have Jesus, you have peace. You have peace. All you need to do is let it have its perfect work in you. Let peace work in you. Hallelujah. Is anybody with me today? Yes. Hallelujah. The scripture says in Philippians 4, 6, 7, be anxious for nothing. Too much anxiety in the church. Sometimes we hear stories where the believers, they sound so anxious. Just rest in the peace of God. Hallelujah. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, letting your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passes all understanding will guard your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. Paul is encouraging the brethren of Philippi. He's talking to two sisters. Euodia and Syntyche. They fell into a dispute that was threatening to divide the whole church. Paul was encouraging the two women to be of the same mind, to put aside their dispute, to be of the same mind and to be reconciled. Yeah. Paul was exhorting the brethren of the church that they needed to pray rather than to 
worry over their circumstances, trusting that God will sort everything out. The peace of God, which is beyond human understanding, will keep their hearts and minds. You see, we can't work out how we get the peace of God sometimes. We can't understand why we have peace and there's turmoil going on. We can't understand when the doctor passes a death sentence over us and the Christian is still smiling. And the doctors are looking at us as though we're crazy. Has anybody ever been in that situation? The doctor has given you a terrible report. And you say, okay, all right, all right. But it's up to my Jesus, right? And then the doctors always look at you with a frown. We're always bringing this Jesus thing into it. But they don't understand that's our life. It's our peace. And the first thing that kicks in in times of turmoil, when you hear something negative, is Jesus. Huh? The first thing that kicks in is Jesus. What say of you about this situation? Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. We need to focus on God rather than the situation that we're going through. And allow the peace of God to be activated in the believer's life. Hallelujah. You see, the peace of God erects a barrier from external pressures and internal voices. External voices. But the unrepentant sinner, the person who do not know God, cannot know this peace. And it is this lack of peace in the unbeliever's life that is the cause of all guilt and no doubt contributes to all manner of sickness and disease. We have a lot of people outside the body of Christ today who are sick. Not just sin sickness, but they're, they're, they're physically sick. And they're sick sometimes because they have not the peace of God in their lives. Are you with me today? One doctor remarked, I can take away the disease physical organ. But that is only treating the symptoms with the root cause being something else. This doctor realized that there is a root cause for all sickness that he cannot physically see. Sin is the root. Jesus is the antidote. Jesus is the only person who can give you the internal peace that you need in your life. You heard the, 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 the statistics that I gave earlier regarding the rate of suicide. Because people have nowhere to turn, especially among the young who are going through their battles and their problems and sometimes they're facing them all alone, not knowing to who they can turn. Hallelujah. You cannot be healed of sin outside of the healer. Just as one cannot find peace outside of the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. There is no peace without the Prince of Peace. And I want to invite someone today who has turmoil and anguish and battles in their life, who needs the Prince of Peace in their life. I want to do an altar call first of all for those who do not know Jesus as their personal Savior. Without knowing him, you cannot know this peace of which I speak. Hallelujah. Is there one today who would say, Jesus, I need the peace that only you can give. You will never find this peace in the world, no matter where you search. You can search the whole world over, but you will never find another who can bring the peace that Jesus gives. Would you stand with me, please, Brendan?